Hello and welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. Today we have continuing our black hole theme. Why black holes could delete the universe. The information paradox. <gasps> I love the information paradox. It's something that I'm a little bit familiar with. So let's dive right in and see what I know. Black holes are the most powerful things in the universe, strong enough to rip whole stars into atom-sized pieces. Yeah. Well, this is scary enough. They have an even more powerful and dark property. They might delete the universe itself. God, their animation is amazing as always. Dun, dun, dun. So of course, with the information paradox, just a quick summary of what I think that I know. All information must be preserved in the universe. It's a law that we have concocted, but that we believe is followed. Now, the reason that black holes might be a problem is because they may delete information. And what does that mean, though? What does it mean to delete information versus preserving information? The best example I can think of, if you have enough information, you should be able to tell what happened before. You see a broken bowl on the ground. You should be able to deductively reason if you were to gather every little piece and where they were located, etc., etc., that there was a bowl. And it looked like this, it was not broken, it fell from this location, and it smashed. You should be able to reconstruct that. Or if something burns, it's not something that we can do today, because we don't have all the information, and we never will because we're part of the system. If something burns, you should be able to gather the ashes and deduce what was burned. That information is always preserved no matter what. Now, humanity may not have the ability to accurately measure precisely everything in order to reconstruct backwards, at least to a perfect degree. But with the assumption that all of the information is available to you, you should be able to do that. Black holes potentially break this because they emit Hawking radiation, which is virtual particles stealing mass from the black hole and radiating into space. Now, this is a problem because you cannot reverse that process. You cannot observe a black hole, which only has a handful of properties, and tell what went into it. You could tell the magnetic charge of it. When a black hole irradiates, as far as we know, all that information is gone irreversibly, which is a problem. Black holes in a nutshell. A black hole appears when an extraordinary amount of matter is concentrated in a tiny space. Yep. At their center, gravity is almost infinitely strong, and whatever gets too close is I like that. into its elementary Almost particles. infinitely. Not even Thank light you. can escape black holes, and so we perceive them as spheres of blackness. If you were to fall into a black hole, nothing bad would happen until well after you crossed its outer border, the event horizon. Mm -hmm. You can imagine this as swimming in a river that ends in an enormous waterfall. As you float along, imperceptibly, the stream gets faster and faster, even if you can't see the waterfall yet. Mm -hmm. You could swim to safety until, without even noticing it, you cross the point of no return. No matter yeah. how fast you try to swim now, the stream will pull you towards certain death. Nothing can escape a black hole waterfall once it gets too close. Mm -hmm. This border completely separates black holes from the rest of the universe. Does the event horizon, for the purposes of us escaping it, change? I think it does based on the capabilities of the craft that we are in. Now, the event horizon for light is unwavering because the speed of light in a vacuum is static, never changes. But our capability in a spacecraft does. So our event horizon... The point of which once we cross, the black hole is the only future, varies based on the technical capabilities, how fast we can accelerate in our crafts. Hmm, interesting random thought. We can't access them unless we're willing to never return. So there's no way of telling what's really going on inside black holes, but we have a few ideas about what's going on right at their very edges. Mm -hmm. Black holes radiate their mass away like a hot pot on a stove losing its water as steam. That's a really this good analogy. Hawking radiation. Black holes constantly lose an extremely tiny amount of their mass, a process that's unbelievably slow. 
it will take a black hole with the mass of our sun 10,000 billion 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 years to lose 0.0000001% of its mass. What? <laughs> These things, for all intents and purposes, are eternal. <laughs> they will be around long after we as a species are gone. Long after life is gone in the universe. I think that's a safe assumption. No matter how successful we are, no matter how successful other life in the universe is, they will be the last things around, for sure. By a long shot. This is happening constantly and unstoppably, and as it goes on, it speeds up more and more. In the far, far future, when the last star in the universe has been dead for trillions of years, black holes will become tinier and tinier until they evaporate and disappear, leaving behind just a bit of radiation. Yeah. But this is a problem, because in the process of disappearing, black holes might delete something fundamental, information. <laughs> Two, I like that screen. What is information? Information is nothing tangible. It's typically understood as a property of the arrangement of particles. Okay. What does this mean? Imagine a bunch of carbon atoms. Arrange them in a certain way and you get coal. Yep. Arrange them in a different way and you get a diamond. Mm -hmm. The atoms are the same. What changes is the information. If we make this more complex and add in a few more atoms, we get a banana. Yeah. Change the arrangement of the atoms and we get a squirrel. Ah. The basic building blocks of everything in the universe are the same and don't care if they're part of a bird or a rock or a cup of coffee. Very true. Without information, everything in the universe would be the same. According to the theory of quantum mechanics, information is indestructible. Mm. It might yep. change shape, but it can never be lost. For example, if you burn a piece of paper, you get ash. Ah. That ash will never become paper again. But if you were able to carefully collect every single carbon atom in the ash and measured the exact properties of the smoke and heat radiating from the fire, you could, in theory, reconstruct the paper. The information of the paper is still in the universe. It's yep. not lost, it's just hard to read. And that's an argument that you sometimes hear is, well, that's not possible. How could we ever gather all of that information? The point isn't about us gathering it. The point is, if you could gather every bit of information, which of course we as humans will never be able to do because we are part of the system. We cannot measure without influencing the system that we're trying to measure. So that makes a hard line to the accuracy of what we can determine when it comes to this information. So the argument's not what uh, can humans do. The argument is that information as a whole. And that's a very important distinction. If you could somehow measure every single atom and particle and wave of radiation in the universe, you could see and track every bit of information there is. This is also one of the arguments for predeterminism. This is also one of the arguments for predeterminism. Is everything predetermined? Because things interact in a very specified and predictable way. If we were outside the system, which once again, we are not, and we never will be. But if we were outside the system, and we could somehow gather every bit of information down to the highest level of accuracy of everything in existence, could we just kind of simply rewind and fast forward time and see the future, figure out what's going to happen, see what did happen in extreme detail? Is every action predetermined based on the starting conditions? That's another topic in its entirety, but very interesting thought process. Hypothetically, you could see the entire history of the universe right back to the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And here, black holes trip us up. Information tells us how things are different from each other and what used to be what. Black holes do the opposite. They take different things and make them the same. They destroy information. Mm -hmm. This creates the information paradox, and this is a serious problem. The information paradox. It's fundamental for all our laws of physics that information can never be lost. Existing 
not existing, without information, everything is relative. When it comes to our understanding of reality, we need absolutes. How could we solve this paradox? Isn't everything relative anyway? To a certain degree, at least? Hmm. I feel like I'm going on a side road tangent there, so maybe we'll drop that. There are a few possibilities. One, information is lost irretrievably and forever. This means we have to nix all our laws of physics, throwing out a lot of stuff that's worked very well so far and mm -hmm. start from scratch. What those new laws of physics would look like, or what that means for us, nobody knows. This yeah. is a little frightening, but also kind of exciting. Two, information is hidden. Maybe a little part of the black hole splits off and forms a baby universe. The information mm. would be transferred into this new, weird place where we could never observe or interact with it, but technically it would not be lost. I don't like it's that like one. like having a broken hard drive with all your family photos that you could never access. Sure, it's nice that they've not been deleted, but also not very helpful. Mm -hmm. Or maybe black holes don't disappear completely after the end of their life cycles, but a little piece is left, an information diamond. Like a clown car filled with an infinite amount of information clowns. Well, at a certain point in the black holes, at a certain point in the death of the black hole as it radiates away, wouldn't there hypothetically be a point where the gravity of what's remaining is no longer enough to keep it a black hole? Right, eventually it's going to lose enough mass that it just doesn't have the gravitational pull to overcome the forces that are trying to keep everything from clumping up together like that, theoretically, right? So it would make sense that at some point towards the very, very end of Google years in the future, that there would be something left. It's not all going to be radiation, at least in my mind. But there's a third option. Information is safe after all, not lost or hidden. Perhaps we've just been looking at this whole thing the wrong way. We know that black holes trap information and might delete it later, mm -hmm. but we never thought about what they do with it in the meantime. Where do black holes store their information? Oh. Cosmic housekeeping. Is this the holographic theory where everything is potentially stored holographically in a 3D hologram, if you will, on the border of the black hole? I never really fully bought that one. Let's create a black hole with dirty laundry. First, mm -hmm. we fill up a room with laundry baskets. The more laundry you want to store, the more baskets you put in the room. But at some point, every single basket is full and the room is completely stacked. Yep. Not a single extra sock fits in. The room is at maximum capacity. But if we still squeeze the sock in with a lot of energy and violence, <laughs> the room collapses in on itself and forms a black hole. Okay. But the capacity of the room itself has not changed. Fitting in more stuff or information is still impossible. So what happens if we throw more laundry into it? Hmm. The room itself gets a little bit bigger to make space for the new information. That was always one of the things that bothered me. If it can't overlap, there has to be, at least at the smallest level, a size to the singularity inside, right? Because at the end of the day... You can squeeze them very, very close together, but if they cannot overlap and exist in the same space at the same time, then there has to be a thickness to it. It turns out a black hole grows its surface by a tiny pixel for each bit of information we throw into it. Ah! In a nutshell, more information means more surface area. The information gets painted on the surface, similar to what happens when we throw a stone into a pond. After the stone sinks to the bottom, we can't see it anymore, but we can tell that something went in from the ripples on the surface of the pond. Yeah. Even the smallest black hole can store more information on its surface than all the data ever produced in human history. They do this by storing information in a type of pixel that is unbelievably tiny. Black holes are the ultimate hard drive. <laughs> this is a bit like taking a paperback and turning it into an ebook. Two Ooh. things that look completely different, but their content is the same. Now it it's needs a charger. And memorized in another way. Black holes swallowing stars and planets is a bit like transferring a whole library onto an e-reader. 
This solution is called the holographic principle. I don't like but that analogy, correct, actually. Everything we thought we knew about the universe is wrong. Kind of makes sense, I guess. The universe is a hologram. It's just weird. If information is actually stored on the boundary of a black hole, the Hawking radiation has a chance of learning about the information encoded there and can carry it away. So, information is not lost when black holes fade away and we do not need to redo physics. The information paradox is resolved. So if that's the case, as the Hawking radiation steals mass, it's stealing some of that information with it. Okay, I, I guess I could kind of buy that. But we still have to change our understanding of reality in a fundamental way. If everything that falls into the black hole is stored on its event horizon, that basically means that three-dimensional stuff is encoded on a flat surface. We hmm? have a name for this, a hologram. A hologram, yeah. A hologram is like a 3D photo, a flat piece of plastic that encodes a three-dimensional image. A black hole is like a hologram because everything inside it is encoded on its event horizon. Mm -hmm. A person inside a black hole would experience their usual three-dimensional life. But for us on the outside, would they, they are flattened images on the surface of the black would hole. Would they? The consequence of this is counterintuitive, but stay with us for a moment. Black holes are very extreme objects, but they're still bound to the same rules as everything else. So if this crazy duality between 2D and 3D works for black holes, then it might work for the whole universe and you in it. Mm. Since a person inside a black hole would not realize that they're encoded on a flat surface, we might share the same fate. You really might be stretched over a flat screen at the end of the universe. I get the theory and the hypothesis there on how that could be feasible, but I think that's quite the jump to a conclusion. I don't think that we really have any reason to believe that this is the case. Just that, hey, if we get creative, this could be possible, potentially. But not that this could be the case. I think that there's a large gap there leading us to thinking this might be how it is. The science behind this is complicated and really weird, with toy universes to play with, string theory, and a lot of maths. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about this more in another video. Regardless of what the true nature of the universe really is, we just know that it's strange and complicated, and we have to do a lot more physics to understand it. But black ah, holes the might be key to understanding the nature of reality itself. This video was... I love these videos. I absolutely love Kurzgesagt. Their writing team, the narrator's voice is just so iconic. The music, the animation, the storytelling, the education. They keep it simple, yet informative. I can't say enough praise about these guys. So we've been watching a lot of black hole videos, and there was a lot of overlap between this video and some of the previous ones that we've watched. So I think maybe we'll move on to a non-black hole video next time. But black holes are just so amazing. The hologram principle theory, I still don't really buy that as being a maybe for us. Like I said, I get that it could be a possibility, but I think that we're missing a lot of reason to think that that could be the way that it actually is. I do like how it kind of solves that information paradox, but... I don't know. I also think that the radiating away, it will leave something at the end, right? Because at some point, it will not have mass to continue to be a black hole. It will dip below that threshold. What happens then? I don't know. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about that. And we never will know for sure, because no one will be around when that happens. That's so far in the future that it may as well not even happen, as far as we're concerned. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.